this is my custom modded monotron delay. I added a photo cell to, to, as a control method in addition to the ribbon control. When you put the photo cell on, you can still use the controller, the ribbon control, to interrupt the photo cell. I also added a custom feedback pot, which will allow for a feedback oscillation. In addition to that, it also adds for some pretty cool distortion. I also moved the pot that usually lives here. I replaced it with a full-size pot and put it here. Usually it's only accessible by a small Phillips head screwdriver, and this way you could use it more during your performance. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is a small pot right here on your monotron delay. Be careful when adjusting it. Don't torque on it too hard because you could probably break it. What that pot does is changes the pulse width of your LFO. The shape being, if it's triangle, it will pitch either the triangles in the middle or it'll pitch it so it's to one side or the other side so you get a falling off or a sloping up or a wave. Uh, with a square pulse, it changes it from like a 50% on off to a short off, long on, or vice versa, but it sounds like this. And then the square wave is more like this effect. So that's not a circuit mod, that is just simply moving the pot here so that it is more utilizable when you are doing like a fast uh, LFO, you can mess with it live. In addition to that, I added a momentary switch and what it does, as far as I can tell, it doubles the potential speed that is available stock on the LFO. I'll do a demonstration of the, the stock sounding speed versus the additional mod speed. And also I want to point out when the mod is engaged, the pulse width is bypassed. So if you have the pulse width pitched to one side or the other, it will automatically put it to a 50-50 pulse width while the button is engaged. First do the triangle, stock. That's probably one you're going to want to have. It's pretty rad um, modulation uh, stuff going on. I wish I knew the proper terminology to explain what's happening there. I think it's actually waveforms folding in on themselves because the... I don't know why. <laughs> I feel like where it really shines is in the square wave LFO because um, you get sort of a more robotic kind of sound. So here's the stock. So that's stock. Good fun. So now I will share, to the best of my ability, how to do them yourself if you're interested, the photocell install. What I did was I used the VCC solder point and went from there to a momentary switch that went to one leg of a photocell and the other side goes to the gate solder point. For this built-in feedback, what I did, you have to poke around a little bit, but there's a headphone output jack. I went from one of the positives poles of the headphone out to the auxiliary in. And what I did more specifically, um, in addition to that, is a trick that I've been doing for a little while 
by the way, it's a 10K. I used a uh, linear 10K pot. What I did is I disassembled the pot and I scraped away some of the material on one end so that when the pot was turned all the way down, it would essentially break connection. So you could just add a switch if you wanted um, to make it work. I just Also, I liked, I put the pot on the outside because th at this point it was before I discovered the mini pots. And I also liked the aesthetic of the kit bashing look. This was the first one I started modding. So it's got a crude look that I actually quite like. Lastly, with the um, LFO double speed, all I did was desolder the stock uh, micro pot and then rewire it here exactly as it was wired. And then the switch, all the switch does is jump the two outer legs of the pot together with the, the momentary switch. When they both go through the pot, that's where you get that extended LFO speed. Uh, this is one of my favorite modded things, if not my favorite modded project that I've done. It's simple and tight. You can get really rad sounds with it, and I have a lot of fun with it. Definitely, it's definitely my uh, favorite monotron in the series. Thank you very much, as always, for watching my video. In this video, you'll notice I'm using my modular power supply. Um, if you haven't seen the video, just look up my uh, mobile jam uh, station with a uh, modular power supply. It's super simple, and it's just these two header pins that allow me to run off a longer-lasting power source. Also, you'll notice that the um, touchpad has been replaced on this uh, with from an inverted one to a standard one. And that is because if you decide to mod your monotrons, just a heads up, I'd recommend not detaching the ribbon cable because every time you detach it, it's super, super delicate. And I was only able to detach and reinstall it like three times before it deteriorated and stopped working. And uh, by the time I figured out how to repair it, I had already done so much damage to it that I had to I actually bought an extra monotron to mess around with. And I just pulled the ribbon from that one, the bottom of the chassis and replaced the whole thing. So it's good to know if you want to mod your monotrons, look out for that.